Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about symbolic reasoning with bounded cognitive resources. And uh, first, I'll present uh, the program. It's called uh, OCAM. That can start from scratch and learn the mechanics of domains like arithmetic, propositional logic, grammar, and functional programming. And then I'll illustrate how Occam can solve some problems in those domains. So Occam in a nutshell, Occam makes uh, computations with uh, bounded cognitive resources and it can learn from reward and punishment. And we use a computable version of the uh, world complexity. Um, yeah, it's based on a computational framework for radical constructivism. I'll talk a little bit more about that. So here are two quotes by uh, Ernst von Glasersfeld, who, is, uh, who coined uh, the term radical constructivism. And he says that radical constructivism starts from the assumption that knowledge is in the heads of persons and that the thinking subject has no alternative but to construct what he or she knows on the basis of his or, own, or, his or her own experience. And um, then this one that makes it uh, that is particular to radical constructivism. A theory is considered viable as long as it is useful in accomplishing a task or in achieving a goal that one has set for oneself. So, constructivism has many meanings. It's a, it's a broad philosophical tradition. And in mathematics, it means that uh, the focus is being shifted from truth to proof, provability. And uh, constructivism acknowledges that there is a relation to psychology, that mathematics is a mental activity. But it never makes that relation explicit. So I suggest we try to add uh, radical constructivism in this context and uh, look at uh, bounded proofs or bounded computations and make the relation to psychology uh, explicit. So radical constructivism in mathematics is about studying what people can actually uh, understand and what they can actually prove and compute given their bounded resources and the experience that they have had. So, okay, now I'm going to uh, present a computational framework for radical constructivism and uh, then uh, show how this uh, program OCAM is defined. So first, there's some, some technical details here. So a string is a finite sequence of symbols. It could be any, any kind of symbols. And a variable is one, is a member of that set, x, y, or z. We don't need more than three variables. Um, and a term is a finite tree whose nodes are labeled with, uh, with strings without punctuation signs, punctuation symbols like parentheses and so on. But for simplicity, we will write them as we usually do as strings, and then we may need to reintroduce those punctuation symbols. So as you can see, terms look like they usually do. 2 plus 3, x times y, x or true, and Alice runs. Terms from different domains. Okay, and then axiom, it's not a single term as it usually is in logic, for example, but it's a pair of terms which encodes a rewrite rule. Um, and the restriction here is that uh, all variables that appear in the second term must also appear in the first term. It's a so-called purity condition. And so here are some examples of axioms. Uh, 2 plus 3 equals 5. And uh, x times y equals y times x. And um, this is from the domain of logic. Then we can say that x or true is, lo is logically equivalent to true. So that's another different interpretation. 
and in grammar, Alice Rons represents the correct sentence. Okay, and the theory then is just it's just a finite set of axioms. So this is an example of a theory which encodes uh, the multiplication and addition tables, ten times ten. We call it B for later purposes. And now that we have defined a theory, we can talk about computations in, in that theory. Uh, and there's only one single computational rule. And that rule is a rewrite rule which enables subterms to be replaced according to the axioms of the theory. So I'll give uh, several examples now of computations in different theories. So here's a computation in uh, the theory of arithmetic, like 1B that we just saw. And um, yeah, we just compute this uh, expression and we are allowed to replace, for example, 2 plus 4 by 6. That's an axiom which tells us that. And another axiom tells us that we are allowed to replace 6 plus 1 by 7. And the third axiom takes us to 42. So that's a computation in arithmetic. Here's a computation in logic, which can be identified with proof in logic. So this one says that P or Q, now P implies Q or P is a tautology because it is equivalent to true at the bottom line. So in the first step we rewrite P implies Q as not P or Q. And so eventually we're able to derive true in this case. And here's a computation in grammar, Bob place. Uh, then we know that we are allowed to replace place by crawls, and then we are allowed to replace Bob by Alice while preserving grammatical correctness. And since we know that Alice crawls is a correct sentence, we can derive that Bob place is also a correct sentence. And here's a computation in functional programming where we reverse um, uh, a list which is uh, six. So six and seven, and uh, yeah, it uses a standard Haskell program for reversing strings. You take the head of the list, put it last, and then before before that, you put the reversed um, first part, of the, 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 the reversed uh, part, of the, the reverse of the rest of the list. So that's how this computation goes. Okay. And I said that we were going to use bounded computations. And that's easily done because now that we know what a computation is, we can just impose some very simple restrictions on those computations. So we say simply that the computations have to have bounded width and bounded length. So computations, a bounded computation must fit into a, a box. Bounded width picked uh, max size 8 of the terms and uh, bounded length, max length, 20. That turns out to be enough to simulate most of the things that people can do if we try it experimentally. Okay, so now we know what a computation is, and even a bounded computation. So an item now, we have to model the environment as well. Now that's the next thing. So an item is a triple of the form two terms and one real number. And that real number represents utility. So this is inspired by reinforcement learning, etc. And uh, an, an environment is a finite set of such items. So here's an example of an environment. And you can think of it as feedback from the environment. So if you, if you on, on your theory, so if you believe that 2 times 0 is 0, you can get one point from the environment to get rewarded. If you believe that 3 times 0 is 0, you also get rewarded. But if you believe that 2 times 1 is 0, then you will get punished. And also if you believe that 2 times 1 is 1, then you also get punished. So the environment will give you feedback on your theory and on the computations that you're able to make. Okay, and then we define this key notion of fitness. So we'll say that theory in a certain environment has a certain fitness. And that fitness, we get it by adding 
all the utilities of the items in the environment. And uh, we take those that we can compute uh, using bounded computations in the theory. And in this way we get a fitness function which is uh, computable. Yeah, so again, suppose that uh, E is the same environment that we just saw. And uh, then we have different fitness, fitness values for different theories. So for example, the first one, if we believe that 2 times 0 is 0, that's our only belief, that's our, our, our only axiom, then the fitness of that is 1, that theory. If we overgeneralize and believe that everything is equal to 0, then we, that the environment will give us reward 1. And if we believe that x times 0 is 0, then we will get two points. We will be able to compute the first two, but not the last two. So we will get all the rewards there is and no punishment. So that's, that's an optimal axiom. Okay, so we, uh, now we look at how we learn theories uh, automatically. We wrote this uh, program in, in Haskell, and it takes a, a theory and an environment as inputs. And as output, it gives nothing or an axiom which is uh, chosen from a finite set of candidates. And um, Occam will prefer uh, axioms that maximize the fitness of T plus X. And are as short as possible, it should be like that to preserve the name Occam. And also as general as possible in the sense that it prefers many variables to constants. Okay, so here is uh, uh, an example again. Suppose that we start with an empty theory. It doesn't know anything about anything at all. Uh, and the same, the same environment. Then Occam will find this optimal axiom that we just talked about. And in this way, we can teach it different things so that it will learn and develop a stock of arithmetical axioms. And in the end, it can solve previously unseen problems, such as uh, 67 times 8. It just picks up the patterns and the standard algebraic uh, axioms. It can also uh, prove, um, solve induction problems. So, for example, this one, compute the next number of 8, 11, 14. Then we can start with uh, this arithmetic theory, and we say that the first uh, number is going to be 8. F0 is 8 and f1 is not 8, then it will find that one. And then we continue with this theory and say that the second number is going to be 11 and the third is going to be 14. Then Occam will find this axiom uh, fx plus 1 equals uh, fx plus 3, the recursive definition, and using that definition it can, it can compute the next number of the sequence, which is 17. Just like uh, we humans like to, to uh, say. This, that's the preferred answer. And, uh, okay, in conclusion, using Occam we can start from scratch and uh, gradually learn elementary theories in domains like arithmetic, proposition logic, grammar, functional programming. And after learning, Occam can match or exceed average human performance at, for example, number sequence problems and also at uh, tautology identification. So, in summary, Occam is a domain-independent domain program that matches or exceeds average human performance in a few domains.